What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We have moved on from Super Speedways and we're heading out west to Sin City for the Penzo 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This will take place on Sunday, March 3rd, around 3 p.m. Eastern. And this is going to be our first real race of the season as we're going to see who actually has speed because everybody can look good at Super Speedways. Also, Atlanta, amazing, amazing race. Definitely above my expectations. But we're moving on. If this happens to be your first time here, what's up? My name is Chris Pinnell. I break down NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. Videos on Saturdays, live streams on Sundays. And the plan is for around 12 or 1 p.m. Eastern. So be there, be square. It's always a good time. So come in, check it out, ask me whatever questions you got. And unfortunately, we had no winners for the comment contest last week because I guess nobody had their crystal ball out to tell them that Todd Gillen was going to be the highest lap leader. So this weekend, Tell me who you think is going to score the most fantasy points and how many that is. And whoever's closest will win a cash prize. Just make sure you comment down below for the race starts. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and let's dive right into it. All right, so let's talk some strategy here for Las Vegas. If you have been brand new to NASCAR DFS this season and your first couple of slates were Daytona and Atlanta, you're going to be in for a bit of a surprise because this is not going to be anything like those two races. You probably just think you stack the back, print money after all these idiots wreck, and that's how you win. Well, not really the case here at Las Vegas. Now, I'm recording this part before practicing qualifying. I'm going to assume all the good drivers probably did not qualify in the back. So this is the time to play the drivers that are fast, whether they're starting up front or not. We're going to be able to digest practice time, see who's fast in the one, five, ten lap runs in practice to help indicate who's going to be fast during the race. We can look at past performances at similar tracks in the next gen era, green flag speed numbers, track history, things like that. So these are more predictable races which means they're going to be a little bit more boring as well but we can build for that so roster construction for an intermediate classic 267 lap 1.5 mile track type race is you're pretty much going to want at least two dominators per lineup and by dominators i mean guys that can get up front lead laps get fast laps which fast laps are now projectable they're not just running throughout the field like we see at the drafting tracks and by no means feel the need that you have to get all this place differential in your build just because you have atlanta and Daytona in your memory. If all the faster cars are starting in the front half of the field, it's fine to have a pretty top heavy lineup. Sure, you might want one guy in the 20s or 30s. You're gonna have to fit in some cheapy. So it's it's fine, but don't build like we did the previous two weeks because none of that means anything for this week. And finally, moving on to the driver by driver breakdown, I do have to mention one thing first, and that is of course, if you want to join the community, get access to all the projections that I mentioned on live stream and the behind the scenes stuff that you don't see over on YouTube including DraftKings Fandle projections, my sim scores, my entire betting dashboard, which give you the fair odds and pretty much everything I have for top three, top five, top 10 odds, my ownership projections, optimizer, my article going over cash games, tournaments, bets, props, and my Discord community, which is popping 24 seven. So if you want access to all that, link down in the description or the pinned comment. My prices are very fair compared to everybody else in the industry. I do appreciate everyone that has signed up so far. It's been nice to have. And as you know, I am partnered with Stochastic. And if you want to check out their NASCAR Sims package, which is brand new, you can pre-simulate the entire slate, see which drivers have the best return on investment or which lineups are looking the best compared to the field. They can upload my own projections to it if you want your own personal twist. If you want to check this out, you can use the link down below in the description or the pinned comment and make sure you tell them I sent you. All right, so let's get into the slate here. Qualifying and practice just ended a few moments ago. So these are my first initial reactions to the entire slate. And obviously, more updated stuff will be on the live stream tomorrow and on Patreon later tonight. And I think the way qualifying took out will make this a pretty interesting slate because obviously we have some really good drivers up front. We also have some pretty big names starting in the back half or middle pack of the field here. So it's going to be pretty fun to see how roster construction is going to look. But we're going to start up top with the man, Cal Larson, $11,000 on DraftKings, 14K over on Fandle. He was the odds on favor by a decent margin to win this race uh, before practicing qualifying. And I'm assuming that's going to hold up. No, he did not get the pole. Joey Logano stole it, but his car looked way better than Joey's. And based off what we see in Las Vegas last year, we had a really hard time not seeing Kyle Larson being the favorite to win this race. Because if we look at the four race sample size of Vegas in the next gen car, obviously these numbers look pretty good. Three top fives, has a win, the most laps led, and the most fast laps. And if we're looking at practice, which is probably more important than anything else, ninth in the one lap, he was in that second group. And practice did get split up again. And in group one, they had Ryan Priest spin out when all those guys had like four to five laps on their tires. So obviously their five lap runs aren't going to be as reliable as you'd like them to be. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But Kyle Larson was in group two and he smoked the field first in the five, 10, 15 and 20 lap runs. So I think he's a cash game play. I probably want to be overweight in tournaments. Just email the Kyle Larson I can handle here. 
I know there's no place differential upside, but if he's going to lead all the laps, we're going to want him in our lineups. And then we have Denny Hamlin, who's a bit interesting here because he's sandwiched in between the 200 cars who obviously look like they're the two best cars in the field this weekend. So it's going to be really hard not just building around them. The problem is, though, they're all really expensive and we definitely can't play all three. You can probably fit two in of this big three if you want, but three is going to be a bit of a stretch. I think in cash games, or maybe just in general, Denny Hamlin will probably end up being higher own. He starts 24 spots further back than William Byron, because I think everyone's going to want to play Kyle Larson. So it probably comes down to if you are double stacking guys in the 10K range, do I pair him with William Byron to go for the Hendrick stack, or do I grab Denny Hamlin to get that place differential mixed in with the guy starting on the front row? Obviously, he's been good at Vegas before. He's one of the best drivers at intermediate, screen flag speed wise, tops of the charts last year. So there's really not a reason not to like Denny besides obviously qualifying and practice was an amazing form. 17th in the 5, 10, and 14th in the 15 lap and 9th in the 20, which was the worst of any driver that did do a 20 lap run, even worse than Zane Smith and Ricky Stenhouse. So those are the concerns. Although historically, I feel like in Vegas, he tends to not qualify or practice the best. So I certainly don't want to sound the alarm bells on Denny. He's certainly in play. It's just William Byron right there. He's staring at me, begging me to play him. And speaking of him, he's starting in fourth. I feel like him and Kyle Larson are basically the same plays. Obviously, in this first race last year, it was the Byron and Larson show. And wouldn't be too surprised if that happens once again. He opened up at 9-1. to one, actually took a bet on William Byron. And with how he looked in practice, how he looked in qualifying, that's probably going to go down. So I feel really good about my Byron bet. And as you can see, he was pretty much second to Larson, his teammate in everything. 5, 10, 15, 20 lap runs. And Byron's also one of the best at 1.5 mile tracks, intermediates in general last season and if we're looking at vegas in the next gen era he actually has the best average running position of any driver the best driver rating and he also has a win under his belt as well as he won this race last season so no reason not to like willie b this week if he's going to be under own because people are going to jam in larson hamlin i definitely want to be overweight and i do think he's a fringe cash game play i think larson would be my priority but certainly both are viable ryan blaney so we have the two penskis here who feel a bit expensive at ten thousand two hundred bucks and 10,000 for Joey Logano. So personally for me, just eyeballing it, we'll have to see how my projections shake out. But I can tell you right now, Larson, Hamlin, Byron are certainly going to be favored over the two Penske boys here. So even though Joey's in the pool, probably going to have a hard time getting there because I can't really see him holding off Cal Larson. And this reminds me of last year where we saw Joey Logano on the pole and then the 200 guys ran him down pretty quick. And if we're looking at Logano's practice, 18th, 14th, 11th, and 10th, which it's fine. I don't think he's going to be terrible, but I'm not sure he's going to have the best car in the field to be able to dominate this race. And Ryan Blaney starts 14 spots further back, so it looks like he'll probably be a little bit more in play for me in practice for him. 10th in the 10 lap, 8th in the 5, and 3rd in the 20. So again, another guy that should be a top 10 contender. But given their price points, I want the three above them in Byron Hill and Larson more often than not. And moving out of the 9K range, lots of good drivers right here and all look like they're going to be decent plays. Obviously, some better than others. Chase Elliott starting at 11th. I feel like I would prefer him over Legato and Blaney. Just feel like I can trust Hendrick a little bit more. He was also fifth in the five lap, six in the 10. So Elliott's in the tournament pool. I can't imagine he's going to have too much ownership because I do think the big three up here will probably beat a lot of it. And then at that point, you just really can't jam in too many guys. Nine can above with them. So Chase Elliott would probably be lower owned. See how the projections like him. I can't really see him getting up front, but could be a top six contender. Kyle Busch, I would prefer over Chase Elliott. I could see some ownership going here. Obviously, this is his home track and has a really good track history here. And you look good in practice as well. Fourth in the five, fourth in the 10, sixth in the 15, and sixth in the 20. He's been pretty hot to start the season as well. Ran well at Daytona and ran well at Atlanta. You know, if we're looking at the past four races in the next-gen era, at Vegas for him, average finish of six. I believe he also has three top fives and four top 15. So Kyle Busch most certainly, outside of any issues, will be moving up. So certainly got some interest right there. Christopher Bell, 9500 bucks. He's starting in 10th. Looked pretty decent in practice. 9th in the 5, 7th in the 10, 7th, 15, 4th in the 20. Probably going to run 5th to 10th, I think, the majority of the day. Obviously, you can't rule him out being able to get up front at some point, but not really seeing him contend to dominate over the likes of, say, Kyle Larson and William Byron. Although it is possible, we did see Christopher Bell almost win this race over Kyle Larson last year in the fall. But I'm still going to be giving the edge to the Hendrick drivers. And then we have Martin Truex Jr. at 9300 bucks. He's starting in 7th, which is a big improvement from what we saw in practice because he was looking pretty slow. 27th in the 1 lap, 24th in the 5, 16th in the 10. But Truex is like Denny Hamlin where I'm not going to be too worried about a poor practice performance because he should be much better in the race. And if we look at his numbers at Vegas, historically he's been really good here. And in the next-gen era, average finish 7.8, running position of 9.3. And overall, numbers look really good in the top 10 each and every single time. So while I'm not sure he's going to dominate, 
23.3 laps led per race. The fast laps have been there, so Truex will probably be a top five contender. But being up front over the likes of, say, Kyle Larson, William Byron, I hate to keep using them as an example, but they definitely look like they have the best two cars, I would say is unlikely. But at his price point, he could still rack up fast laps. And if he gets a top five, you're still in contention with them. Then you have Rosh testing at $9,100. Love the price tag on FanDuel because the dominator points don't really mean too much over there. And if we look at Ross's numbers from the next gen car at Las Vegas, he's been great. He's actually averaging the most DraftKings points per race. He has the best average finish of 5.5, the second best average running position only behind William Byron, the second best driver rating, and he also has three top fives as well. So even though Ross kind of fell off in practice a little bit, I'm not going to look into it too much. He should still be a top 10 contender at the very least. I did actually have a bet on him to get a top 10 at minus 135. I obviously don't love the qualifying effort, but I think by the end, he should be in contention there. Dropping down to the AK range, some more good drivers. Tyler Reddick, a guy that I think I'll have plenty of interest in heading into Sunday. He's starting in 18th, only 8,900 bucks, a little bit more expensive on Fanda, but fourth and one lap in practice, seventh to five, third the 10, and third and the 15, which obviously is going to catch my eye. Plus, he's been pretty good at Vegas as well. Three top 10s and four top 15s. Hasn't been too much of a dominator. But he has been able to get up front and lead some laps. And Bubba Wallace starting in fifth, 8700 bucks. Like the price tag on Fandle. Only going to be a tournament play for me. We know he's good at these types of tracks. And if we're looking at practice, pretty much a fringe top 10 driver. 12th in the 5 lab, 8th in the 10, 4th in the 15. The only concern here is that starting position because more than likely he is going to fall back. But at intermediates, we do know the 23 team will certainly have speed. And Tyler Reddick, his teammate, is pretty fast as well. So the problem is, like, why not just play Reddick? starting 13 spots further back well you gotta factor in ownership as well so other than that i feel like they have some pretty similar finishing position upside then we have the two rfk cars brad keselowski and chris busher to me chris busher seems to have the faster car but with brad keselowski you know those veteran drivers i always try to be a little bit cautious if they have a really poor practice like we've seen in the past where kevin harvick would have some bad practices then once the race starts it doesn't really matter so I wouldn't rule out Keselowski just because of a poor practice. He's starting in 25th, so obviously it's not encouraging, but he should be able to move up at the very least. But the two Toyota drivers above him do look a little bit better because we get some nice shades of green in practice. Yeah, I probably won't have much or any of the RFK guys, but if I was going to have one, probably Keselowski just because I get that uh, baked in place differential. Alex Bowman, starting in 23rd, finished third in this race last year. So looks like he's going to be the slowest Hendrick driver according to practice. But I have to imagine he's going to find some speed during the race. I just don't feel like he's going to be that much slower than everybody else. He's only 8100 bucks, starting in 23rd. So I can get on the Bowman train here. And that's another reason where I don't really see myself getting the too much of like Busher, Keselowski, Wallace, because Tyler Reck and Alex Bowman look like some of the better plays in the mid-range this weekend. Dropping out of the 7K, guys. Shout out to Daniel Suarez for getting the dub last week, although I had a bet on Blaney to win at 12-1. to But losing that by like 0. 0.00003, it seems like, was certainly hurtful but gotta give him a shout out that was a really great race and the three wide to the finish was absolutely awesome so we're starting in 16th practice 23rd 18th 13th I feel like he's probably gonna finish somewhere close to where he starts if we look at his numbers at vegas four race sample size running position of 19th average finish of around 20th probably gonna run anywhere from 15th to 20th so i don't really see a ton of upside here i would rather play ty gibbs personally 7600 bucks he's starting in eighth and I didn't mention this, but these are not the up-to-date odds. These are before practice qualifying. Obviously, this is going to look a little bit different. I feel like Ty Gibbs will probably go a bit shorter because I'm not sure how much books look into the long run for practice. But he has P3 in the one lap and obviously P8 in qualifying. So I do think he's a decent tournament play. Should have some speeds in a JGR ride. You can get about 7600 bucks. So it's kind of like Alex Bowman where you're getting the cheapest driver of the two best teams. So that's worth taking a shot on. And Eric Jones, usually a guy that I don't mind at these types of tracks because he always seems to have a bit of speed at these larger tracks. But I'll be honest, practice was very concerning for me. 33rd in the one lap, 32nd in the five lap. Qualified a little bit better in 24th, but definitely have some concerns here because it's not like he's in the same exact car as last year. They did move over to Toyota. So that's a, it was a little concerning to see what he did in practice. Obviously, if you're looking at uh, the next gen, similar track history, if you're looking at last year, I was finished 17.5, running position just inside the top 17, five top 10s, six top 15s, and eight top 20s. So I feel like he can move up, but the practice is a bit concerning. I, I think Ty Gibbs might be the better play, for, especially if he's going to be lower owned because you're not going to get that place differential upside. But I'll be honest, the 7K range kind of sucks. So Gibbs is a standout for me. Eric Jones, if you believe he can pick up some speed after practice. But other than that, I, I 
can't see a reason to play Michael McDowell, and there's no chance I'm playing Austin Cindric starting in third. So we'll just move on past those guys. If they're optimal, so be it, but I don't want to be a part of it. Austin Dillon, 6,800 bucks. He's starting in 19th. Another guy just really slow. 29th, 22nd. Both in the 10 laps, so definitely got a bit better. Looking at his numbers at Vegas for a sample size, average finish of 16.5, running position of 21st. He could probably hang somewhere to where he starts. Three top 20s in four races at Las Vegas. We're looking at a 13 race sample size of last year at similar tracks. Average finish of 21st, so probably going to be close to where he's starting. So not a ton of upside from Austin Dillon. John Hunter Nemechek, slow like his teammate Eric Jones. He's going to offer you a place differential upside, but you're paying nearly $7,000 for it. Just not a ton of speed in the car. 20th in the 10 lap, but I believe only 24 drivers ran 10 lap average, so it might not really be as good as it looks. So concerns there with some of the legacy cars. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. looks a bit faster. Like, I'm not, again, I'm not sure what ownership's going to look like, but if more people flock to the place differential, especially from what we've seen from the first two weeks where place differential seems to work out pretty well, you can get Stenhouse like, at a fraction of the ownership. That might not be a bad way to go. 16th, 15th. Ninth in the 10 lap in practice, ninth in the 15th, and fifth in the 20th. His numbers at Vegas aren't exactly amazing, but last year at similar tracks, he was able to rack up some top 15s and plenty of top 20s. So while he's not going to grade out too well on paper, I don't think starting in 13th, at least he did have some speed in practice. Uh, Chase Briscoe starting in sixth, he was god awful at intermediates last year. Like I am talking straight up lawnmower, can barely contend for a top 30. See if I can pull up the uh, similar tracks. I believe it was a 13 race sample size for Briscoe last year. Average finish 23rd, running position of 25th, drive rating of 45.8. It was a bad time for Chase Briscoe. Looked pretty sporty in practice, though. Seventh in the one lap, eighth in the five lap. I doubt he's going to be able to hold this position. So I can't really see myself getting the much Briscoe at all, but he will be very low owned. Poor the joy. Uh, pretty surprising in practice with a six and five lap. I, I doubt he's going to be able to be a top five contender. Qualified 17th. If he can hang within the top 20 at 6300 bucks, not terrible. Noah Gregson, though, I feel like he's going to be the one that gets some ownership here. So he's starting back in 30th, second in the one lap in practice, third in the five lap. He's in the 10 car, which I know Stuart Haas is pretty much down in the dumps these days. Like, I don't think they have one driver above yeah, 6500 bucks. Yeah, Briscoe at 64, Gregson at 62, Barry and Priest in the bottom of the 6K range. So, yeah, they're all pretty much starting pretty low besides Briscoe. I can see them all being halfway decent place, differential plays, especially Ryan Priest because he's starting in 36. Like, I mean, he, doesn't, he really can only go forward. He re- ended up wrecking out and qualifying. So if I had to rank the Stuart Haas cars, I would probably have Gregson first, then Ryan Priest, then Barry and Briscoe. Like, obviously, Briscoe looked pretty fast, but I think holding the sixth position, especially from what we saw last year at Stuart Haas, I feel like it's a very unlikely situation. Uh, Barry, I mean, these guys are pretty much all the same, but with Ryan Priest starting the very back, obviously he'll be popular. No Gregson as well. Dropping down to the 5K range, we have Todd Gillen leading off, starting in 31st. Really slow, 35th in the one lap, 33rd in the five, and 24th in the 10th. Just give me Ryan Priest for $100 more. Probably rather have Josh Barry as well. Uh, Carson Hosevar and Zane Smith, the second and third cars of Spire, Corey LaJoy up above. But Spire had some speed, it looked like. Obviously, Roger Carruth getting the dub on the truck race, which I did watch, and that was really awesome. Actually, one of the best races I think I've seen. It was very back and forth, and one guy just wasn't out dominating. Kyle Busch didn't win. So that was a really fun race to watch. It looks like Zane Smith has a bit more speed. Fifth in the 10 lap compared to 21st for Hosevar. Fifth in the 15 and seventh in the 20. So I can see both these guys being viable. But if I had to pick one Zane Smith, you get him, what, eight spots further back and showed some more speed in practice. So that's where my interest will be. Probably a good tournament play because I could see guys like you know Hemrick starting in 34th, Haley in 35th, and obviously Priest in 36th getting more ownership. So I think Zane Smith would definitely be a decent tournament play that speed can hold up. Hemrick in 34th, it's where he was in the five lap, 20th in the one lap. Like he should be able to move up, but it's not like it's Atlanta or Daytona where these guys could just move through the pack easily. Someone's gonna have to be in last, and even though we don't have some of the ugly names like we used to. BJ McLeod, Garrett Smithley, Cody Ware. Someone's going to be in the back. And it's probably going to be some of these guys. Because someone's got to suck out there. Obviously, JJ Yaley's a lock to suck, it seems like. He'll probably just be running dead last for the majority of the day. But someone else has to run 36. Someone's got to be 35th. So going to be a few of these guys in the back here. Uh, Harrison Burton, slow as usual. He sucks. Justin Haley, he's talented. It's just he's in a Rick Ware car. So I wouldn't expect the same kind of upside like we saw the previous two weeks of drafting tracks. 
but at least he was 30th in practice, 29th in the five lap. So if I'm going to pick any of these absolute junkers in the back from Zane, not including Zane Smith, but from Hemrick on down, Haley's probably the one I will land on. Derek Krause, he's in a probably car, but not seeing a ton of upside here. He has Grala in the Rick Ware car, probably not a lot of upside there starting in 32nd. And then Yaley, I believe he just did like two laps in practice. He got a couple of guys ejected because he failed inspection twice and he was like 11 miles per hour slower than Harrison Burton in practice. So I don't really see any reason at all to play JJ Yaley. With that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you did enjoy. And if you did, make sure you like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are brand new on your way out. And don't forget for the comment contest, tell me who you think is going to score the most fantasy points and how many in the winner cash prize. Just make sure you comment before the race ends. If you want to check out the extra content over on Patreon, you know where to find it. Link can be found down below in the description. I will see you all, hopefully, the live stream around noon Eastern on Sunday. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all.